Narwhals, narwhals, narwhals. Everybody loves narwhals. No, they don't, because I don't know how many people know them. So I don't know if they like them. Hi, I'm Nar. Or you can short for Mr. Narwhal, because it's a long name. And Nar is short head. Uh, I'm here to talk about the narwhal. Now then, I'm going to give a brief overview of the narwhal. Now, the narwhal is a mammal. That is a whale. <laughs> what? Mammals can live in the water? What? Um, they are in the same family as the beluga whale. It's this thing. Fun fact. Their noggin. That, that round thing that looks so... Delicious is called a melon. So the narwhal is a mammal in the same family as the beluga whale, and its scientific name is Monodon monocer. Mon monos Wait, what is that? Okay, that's Monodon monoceros. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, just checking it. Um. I'm gonna give a brief overview of three things. Not four, because I ran out of these things. The first thing that we're gonna talk about is the narwhal's tusk. That is actually a tooth. That thing, right there, yep. The third thing we're gonna talk about, <laughs> oh my. The second thing we're gonna talk about is its diet. The third thing we're gonna talk about is the narwhal itself. Its size, stuff like that, uh, the other things. Um, let's start with the horn. We're going to go in order, because why not? Now, what do they use it for? Well, they use it for things like detecting the temperature of the water. Yeah, you heard that right. Detecting the temperature of the water. Also, water pressure, particle gradients, and motion. That's what we think, because we don't know. I don't know why we don't know. I mean, we know more about some random blobfish down 200, 300, 400 feet down in the ocean, but we don't know something about something as great as that. I don't understand. Science, people, biologists, come on, guys. We gotta, we gotta step it up. Um, the next thing that, in addition, sorry, um, they don't use it for anything else, I don't think. The tux is flexible. It can flex about a foot in all directions, I'm pretty sure. And it's, ba you know, it's a tooth, so it, it has nerves. It's pretty crazy. It's a tooth. It has nerves. It also has living pulp. That was just in the Google thing that I looked up. I don't know why that's there. Don't ask me. I genuinely don't know. Okay, now, um, that's really all I have to say on that. It can get up to at least nine feet, nine feet tall. I mean, that's pretty, that's pretty big. I mean, we're, we also, just side note, we are going to include the size of the horn into the size of the narwhal when we make it to that point. Yeah. Uh, 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 hell. Um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, that's a brief overview, I think. I mean, it's, it's pretty brief, I think. <laughs> no. No, it's not. Okay, that's fine. Okay, next thing we're moving on to is their diet. Now, the narwhal's diet consists of mainly arctic and- ar no, just arctic cod, yeah. Squid. Greenland hy- hybut? Hy- hybut? Hy wait, wait. Wait, what is that? It's hy- hybut? Greenland hybut, something like that. I already said- did I say- did I say shrimp? Did I say squid? Okay, basically, it's 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 Arctic cod, Greenland highboat, however you pronounce that, shrimp, and squid. Those are those. Yep, yeah, that's what it is. Now the narwhal will use it's a vacuum feeder because it doesn't have many teeth. Now all of those things are kind of small. I mean, compared to the narwhal, at least so. It has like very few teeth, so it is a vacuum feeder. Now, what that means is it sucks. It sucks in the, the its prey and then like pushes back out the water. That's how it works. I don't know how it works, but that's how it works. 
And then the next thing on our list is the narwhal itself. Let's talk about the size. The size, it can grow up to about the size of a large SUV. Including the horn. Don't forget the horn. We're including the horn. Don't get It's the horn. It's just the horn. Okay, so it's including the horn. Remember that. And get the size of a large SUV. Which is about, I don't know how long. It large SUV. 20 to 45 feet. Okay, not 15 feet. That's wrong. Let's just 20 feet. Why not? <laughs> they get up to 20 feet. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's like 19 feet, including the horn. I'm not going to look it up, because why not? Now, the next thing is where they live. Obviously, they live up towards Greenland, Canada, Russia, and Antarctica. They live in the Arctic Ocean. Um, they're very skittish towards humans. They are near-threatened species. That means they're almost threatened by extinction. So, I mean, there's about 80,000 of them left. They can hold their breath for about 15 minutes and then they have to come back up for air. Because, you know, they're mammals and mammals need to breathe, you know. They're not deep. They're not deep, but, I mean, they're they're deep. That, is, that sounds really bad. But, um, there you go. Scuffed, horrible, brief explanation of a narwhal. Oh, and Casey, you're welcome. And with that, I'll see you next time on Mr. Narwhal's educational channel.